I'm Diana Olivirova and um, I'm a cinematographer based in London, uh, originally from Ukraine. I work in the film and TV industry in the UK and last year I did the TV show called We Are Lady Parts that aired on Channel 4. Normally my uh, career is a cinematographer so I do camera and lighting work behind the story uh, but often I do my own artistic projects that I like to explore um, the moment in time and the poetry of the visual language. I did a, a project with Panasonic um, two years ago and uh, it was called Quadrality and I filmed it on S1H camera that was coming out in 2020 and that was a really great success I think of collaboration with them and um, I got um, so much inspiration using the camera and it was a very interesting a very interesting journey, you know. So um, I think after that they kind of contacted me again saying if I would be interested to see the new camera and try something with it as well. And uh, I already had some ideas to do a new film because it's been two years and kind of the... I always feel like the time is coming for something to come out and this was perfect timing for me to tell that story using their new tools. I think the same as the last um, film, Quadrality, this film is a portrait of me in fixed in time. Um, right now and um, last time it was uh, after pandemic well actually during the pandemic so I was kind of like getting all these ideas while I was locked in the room and experimenting with what was around me just to try to feel it in different ways the space that I'm in and that's why I created four different characters but this time uh, you know I was thinking a lot about um, myself as an individual and about the, the way of like me traveling through life and making different decisions and opening different doors. So it all came from idea of doors and going through the path of life when you're trying to discover yourself in different areas and in different characters as you are. And I always think that I can be a different person with different spaces and in different environments and how the environment shapes us and all of that. And, you know, part of it, I felt like I'm I feel like this year I, I went a lot into yoga and things like that, like movement practices. So I felt very close to exploring the movement and the body. And I remembered um, have really good collaborator in Ukraine, uh, a dancer, choreographer, uh, Anatoly Sachivko. So I went to see him two weeks ago to do more dancing in Ukraine. And that's where we filmed like big part of it. And, you know, what's happening there now really influenced that as well. So it's all coming together in a quite a very uh, powerful, tense, you know, editing process right now with the music that we create and we add lots of things in there that really are influenced by what's happening because I can't just not not feel it and not talk about it, you know. So <laughs> it's kind of like the film is, I think, is going to be quite powerful, I hope. And it's like a mix of everything I'm going through right now and I've, that I've been going through, you know, for the, my, all my life in general about me going, you know, through the stages of life and thinking about, you know, identity in general. So, yeah, it's very metaphorical to the film and it's very abstract. It has a lot of movement and a lot of, um, a lot of things, well, how you try to figure yourself out and a lot of searching. Um, and we we'll hope that with my team that we can really deliver the message through it and make you feel something. What I really like about Panasonic that they really support, you know, the expression of what you want to tell and they, you know, they don't force anything on you so it's quite open if you want to pitch your project to them so for me I really appreciate that and I would just be like floating with ideas and thinking about lots of stuff and it was just very exciting to put it all together so um, for me I think it was just very important because I'm also you know coming from different country living here for nine years now I find that um, I find myself lost very often about who I am and where I am, what am I doing and you know and then I can see myself from the eyes of other people because for example I see people who visit me from back home or from you know and they haven't seen me for years so they would tell comment on my life and I would see that I've changed but only because they told me that you know so there's a lot of this kind of like trying to understand what's actually happening in your life when you move countries and when you in general try to grow and where do you grow and what's the point of it all so I found that I found that I had to like express that a little bit and try to express this 
inevitable search for something that you never really find but the whole purpose of the search is the search itself so it's like a circle and um, you know for me I don't know why but the circles became very meaningful um, in general like I love circles I love circle shapes and I always have lots of circles in my life in my house I buy like lots of uh, space age style furniture and the lights are always like you know so for me uh, those shapes and like they'll kind of represent the the things that they come back you know um, so I don't know I just kind of went through all this thoughts about you know like all the different art forms and different ways the circles were represented and in general like the you know the the movement and the dance is also quite circle and you can yeah so and it's funny because when i started collaborating with all the people that i wanted to bring in the team like the choreographer was like oh my god circles it's all it's that it's all my mind my life is also about circles and uh, you know it's like when you really connect to someone on that level when it's just like kind of silly for lots of people they wouldn't really understand what you mean but when people feel it from the inside and you don't really need to explain it too much for me that's the main you know that's the the main thing and um that's why i think the art is a film um art is usually i don't want it to be too literal and people understand exactly what i want to say but i want them to feel something that make them search themselves for the meaning by their own you know um yeah so for me like i, I reached out to the same collaborators as last time the same um, composer emma davis and um, last time i just used her music and this time we just sat together and i brought my other friend eugene who is a violinist and we just jammed and tried to create music that felt right because i brought lots of different references from different cultures and we just like jammed together on the violin and now she's adding some uh, noises to it to make it more electronic and more like moving and my editor is also into music so he started adding his other bits and that so it's all like really nice collaboration but it's it's all about trying to find what the film is about so that's what we're working on now just trying to find what it's about but don't over explain it too much but still make you feel <laughs> so yeah that's my aim at the moment and that's why i think it's so important it's also the actual process of making it for me is very important because it makes me you know dig deeper and it's not easy unless you really push yourself uh, so Lumix GH6 is this uh, very great new little camera that um, I've been using for this film and I really enjoy the fact that you can use ProRes on it so I think that's really groundbreaking and it's 5.7K so for my film specifically that was really useful because you could do a lot of uh, you know the final delivery is for Instagram so I could actually zoom in if I needed to and because being a self-portrait film I don't have that much opportunity to do any movement with camera unless I have someone to help so I've been doing some shots and my editor sometimes would do like a subtle zoom in and that was really great to have all that size um, to be able to action such a small sensor so the sensor is only micro four thirds but it's you know really enough for most of things that I've, that I've been doing in this and um, yeah, so I've been using a vari variety of lenses on this. Um, so starting from Cook that I collaborate with sometimes and they, um, they were really kind, they provided me three lenses, 21mm, 32, 65 and also anamorphic, which I haven't used that much. But um, you know, they were all great on it and you can use the adapter, uh, Metabon's adapter on it to, to add the lens because um, the lens is actually designed for PL mount. Um, but that's no problem because when you get the correct adapter everything is easy. And then um, I really enjoyed uh, Lumix lenses as well and Leica lenses. So I had the selection here, I had the zoom and I had the fisheye and 8mm fisheye was like amazing. I think, yeah, Lumix G, G fisheye. Um, it was just crazy, uh, there's a lot of dancing going on and uh, using the fisheye really enhanced the movement and changed the space and made even, you know, even more circles out of no circle things. <laughs> so everything is slightly kind of warped, which I really liked. And um, yeah, so at some, some point my um, choreographer that was helping me to, uh, to do the filming on the dance was like, oh my God, were you shooting everything in fisheye? Did you realize? <laughs> And I was like, yeah, it's fine, it works. So, you know, we then added some portraits on these lenses, but um, I really enjoyed Fisher. yeah, that was really good. Um, yeah, so what else did I like? I like the, I, the tool of um, image stabilization as well, because I did some, lots of handheld stuff and lots of like um, self-shooting handheld, so I would carry the camera towards me and walk with it. And usually it would be really shaky, but the, this uh, stabilization really helps to solve that problem. And yeah, in general, the menu is quite simple and uh, 
you know, there's a lot of different formats. You can do slow motion in uh, H.265. The settings are really easy to change. There's white balance control and everything. You can shoot in log and you can grade the image later. So that's also, I'm gonna have a very good colorist in this and I'm really looking forward to, you know, dig deep into the colors. It has a dynamic range booster, which helps to uh, boost the highlights. Um, so it changes the ISO to 2000 and then um, the image looks much better. So I've been using that a lot for my stuff because I had lots of highlights. I like that it's very nice and light and you know, like I do a lot of uh, productions on with big, big cameras and lots of gear and lots of like, you have the whole cage around it to use it and you have to have lots of batteries, lots of other things. And this one is just so simple. You just have this, you know, one battery on card. Everything is quite, ergonomically well done so it's very easy to use and you can literally just turn it on and go and shoot it so you know for this kind of projects that I've been doing um, you know for the art films I think this is just perfect yeah this film I made in lots of different locations so I did shoot in Ukraine and on the exterior and interior studios I filmed in my house in my flat here I filmed downstairs in the Barbican estate um, and I filmed around London a little bit as well we are in the edit right now so we are already working on all the footage but um, you know I think it's so nice to have the opportunity to be editing and still have the camera and all the tools to be able to shoot extra bits so at the moment I'm doing some extra bits for the edit because we've also been doing our own music so the music is quite has a certain rhythm and I'm missing in the edit a little bit of those rhythmical elements in the dance so I want to add a little bit of hand movements and things like that and then I want to add a little bit of um, running towards the camera to intercut with other moments when I was running but um, I'm missing more exterior so I want to shoot that downstairs today yeah so we're here in the Barbican estate and just near my house, this part, I walk by it every day and I was like always very inspired by this walk through and it looks very surreal and very, uh, it just takes you in. So I think it's um, something magical about this part I wanted to use for my shots. And yeah, it's also part of my life every day. So I feel like it's kind of very autobiographical where I am walking through. <laughs> So I'm um, using um, 400 um, shutter speed ISO 2000 and the wide open lenses 2.8 and the white balance is usually 4000 Kelvin because I like to shoot in between for anything. And yeah, I'm shooting in Vlog in ProRes 5.7K 4.2.2 HQ. Yeah. And I'm just going to film myself running through that and probably a couple of times because I need to review how it looks. That's my usual way of doing it. And I just watch myself back on this monitor and correct everything. The focus is preset because, yeah, because I can't really change it, but um, it's very wide lens, so it should be okay. Backdrop is not the best. It's too literal. Maybe I'm gonna try that way. I don't know. And maybe I wanna try put it on the floor. We filmed some of the scenes just now um, in one of my favorite tunnels in the Barbican to walk by, but there's no sun and I think sun makes that 100% and at the moment it's like 10% because it's kind of flat and I don't think the costume works because it's too, it blends in, it's very beige and distracting. I think it has to be black and quite simple or like absolutely crazy. So you're like, what is this moving? Um, so I've learned that now I might come back again later to do it when it's sunny and with a different costume or might just use what I've had. I've got some very nice silhouette moments, which I think we could intercut well with other bits. But yeah, now I'm just gonna go home and could do some more bits with the music that I need for my edit, um, like close-ups and things. Also, it's hard to stop yourself. You can do this forever. I could do this film all my life. It's actually interesting because it has all the bits of my flat in it and like equipment, which kind of makes sense. Let's see. Okay, so that kind of works. Kind of works. I'm gonna go to the side. Don't um, don't think about it. Connecting somewhere like cables. I hate cables. Okay, I'll stop now. <laughs> I hate cables. Can't wait when we have no cables in the world. One day. Ooh, this looks quite cool actually. 
Also, like, you know, now I'm like, I was trying to hide something, but it accidentally got into shot, and it actually looks quite cool. Now I'm making another circle, and I'm going to add it from the other side, and whatever. So it's interesting. It works sometimes to your favor. And that's what I like, because you, like, discover things as you do. Yeah, and that's why I like this as well. Yeah. Still that, though, that I can't cover. Interesting. I think I'm going to change, yeah. I'm going to change, come back. Just the top. Oh my God, I always request so much stuff for my shoots and now I can see that you can do a lot without. Just came up with this random uh, setting, just from how I felt and this costume is uh, not what I expected to wear today for this, but I just worked for the setting that I created. And uh, yeah, this is just a little part that I want to add um, for the new music that we did. So it has a bit more march in it and some rhythmic elements. And I just want to play around with the Still, I love this mirror and the keyhole that I uh, got my production designer to create for me. So um, Simon Walker, I worked with him on the TV show and we became friends. So I asked him if he wants to take part in this project and uh, I wanted to do the keyhole to film through. and. Um, as well as the big, big freestanding door in the shape of a keyhole that we filmed in the studio a couple of weeks ago. So he did these two pieces for me and this one is going to stay in my house. I think I'm just going to use it forever now. <laughs> so, um, I really like it and it's, it's really cool and abstract. And I'm using the monitor to, um, external monitor to connect to the camera so I can see myself even though this is covering the camera. So usually I would watch it on a little monitor but this really helps to do everything remotely. And I just play around with lights and using the music that my composer sent me that is um, in a draft state right now. But it's, um, yeah, this is what we're working. We're kind of merging the music with the images now. So, so now I'm using the Fish Islands 8mm and I'm using it because um, I think they really well capture the whole space. Uh, even though the keyhole um, only shows a little bit, but if you go in close in the fisheye, you get all the extra bits of it and it's like super wide. So it distorts as well, so it becomes very abstract, even more abstract than it is. So that really helps this to become less literal and more metaphorical. So we're using similar settings that outside. So I have a wide open um, lens, which is 3.5 in this case. And then I have a 2000 ISO with dynamic booster on, dynamic range booster on, and uh, 4000 Kelvin white balance, and the same ProRes 25 FPS 422 H XQ, yeah, no, not XQ, HQ, sorry, 422 HQ ProRes 5.7K. The monitor that you can tilt up as well as rotate is very useful because when you have the cable, for the other monitor, it's you know it really doesn't get on the way, so that's great. I really love that, and yeah, I love how light it is and how easy it is to move around and use like um, stabilization function as well. So that was really good. Really recommend trying that. So as I came into the room, I thought, you know, I've listened to the music again, and. Um, I didn't really have much of an idea. I kind of felt like I want to do something with hands tapping, maybe face, maybe hitting myself. Um, and um, then I thought, you know, just doing a white background is not going to work for me, I don't think, because I've had so many of the whites already. So I'm thinking what I'm missing. And I've used already this keyhole for other scenes of just me wandering around the flat, like quite small in a big space with the keyhole. And I thought it would be nice to have the face close to the keyhole and do something there. So then I thought about it. I pointed that way. There's a lot of mess there. I don't have time to clear it. So I thought this way actually red is also interesting. I have red curtain and this is red. So then I thought maybe I should wear red. So I blend in. So I thought and went and looked for reds I have and the red I had was too dark. So then I found other things and I brought them here and I tried like a uh, sequencing and other thing. And then I thought about this, which I never wore, but I had it somewhere in the back of my wardrobe. And uh, it worked somehow because it just reflects really interestingly. And then other things come into mind, like, I don't know, it becomes a bit more futuristic and other like elements come to mind. And um, yeah, that's what I like. So when it just flows and you add one bit after another and it kind of automatically shapes itself, this is what I like about doing film like this. You know what, I haven't done that much filming by myself, so I thought I need more of this like meditative thing. Because for me, it's like a meditation. I usually like do it, come back, watch the sunset. 
much again. Ooh, that's much better now. Much better. Right. Now I need focus. Oh, it's hard. Yeah, it looks like a workout to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, when we started the music composing process, we uh, it was an experiment between people who didn't really haven't done it before this way because I had a very uh, analog person and a very digital person together and they never done things like that together. So it was a very cool experiment and I brought a lot of different references from different um, music that I thought was appropriate for this journey and it was a mix of some Ukrainian music, some very this kind of uh, abstract ambient music and like a very, very big mix and some classical music and some modern so it was very kind of abstract. Uh, but then, you know, on the day we came up with such a powerful melody on the strings that I thought was really capturing what I feel. And I've used it a lot for the dancing bits and other things, so it was really good. But when we started editing, we felt like we were missing some, some uh, rhythmical you know, elements. And as we started editing them, uh, you know, this whole situation in Ukraine was happening as well. And I really felt like one of the bits that my composer edited sounded like a march, like an army march. So I kind of pushed it to go further and we added even more so now we're working on kind of make, mixing it all together and making it sure that it's not just that but also like it just f is felt throughout but not that much so it's like a very very long journey of you know making our work so at the moment I have a draft version of it and I felt like it's missing of some fighting elements in the film so it's a lot of dancing a lot of struggling a lot of like removing yourself from the shadow a lot of like trying to get through the bits and like extend the space which all makes sense but I was missing some of the like fast elements to like intercut with that and some flashes and things so I was like trying to do that and trying to see and feel how my parents feel being locked in their house now as well and uh, all of that just goes in the film. And to get started I think it's it's important to be open to anything that can happen with the frame and with the image and with the camera and with the lighting. So I always, um, I always ha had tried to like have an idea, but also be very kind of free in terms of catching the magical moments, which I, you know, just happened now. Like I saw this, this reflection, and then it, you know, you kind of extended it. So I think it's important to just be attentive and open to anything that can happen within the space. And uh, yeah, filming yourself is very meditative, so usually I would have a lot of time and I would just film when I feel like it. I wouldn't force myself that much to do it. So it would be a nice couple of hours that you just sit there and you like watch it back and every time you do something better and better. So we're looking at the edit now and all the things I did myself, I always say just look at the last take first. If, it, you know, if something that is not working, we can look through others, but usually like it takes me four or five takes to get to the best version and then that's it. So it's like kind of slow process of understanding the image, understanding what you want to say through the image and the more you perform, the more you feel way in the image you kind of um, can make more influence and you try different bits and try different lighting setups and you like really think about it. So it's quite nice like you discover the shot as you move within it. So it's useful to have a monitor and it's useful to have you know the monitor on the camera but if it's blocked by something you can use the remote monitor which is also very useful so I recommend having that but you know if you don't have it it's still fun to play around and like play back and watch it again and I think the more challenges there is the better because the challenges make you come up with interesting solutions which you wouldn't come up otherwise. So after this is going to be my short film I hope you enjoy it and I hope it makes you wonder and um, have a good afternoon.